at the World Championship Series match. Tiffany Smalls versus Missy Collins, the champion. Missy from Bolarama Express, Connecticut, current Greater Central Connecticut uh, Bowler of the Year, current Vixens champ. We got Tiffany Smalls who won the Robin in April, former Vixens champ, looking to get her belt back. Yeah, Missy starting off. She starts off strong. Both of these ladies bowled the tournament before this match at this house. Should be familiar with how the house plays. Tiffany Tempin. See if Tiffany covers a spare. Oh, flags it. All right, shake it off. Got a nice little crowd gathering to watch the match. Tiffany in frame two. Ten pin again. Tiffany starts the match nine open, nine open. See if Missy can get a jump early. <laughs> Missy frame two, strong double. Looks like she has a line today. Missy up in the third. See if she can triple here. Good off the hand. Ooh, little early. It's a lot for nine. Leaked that ball out just a little bit. Ended up catching up a little early. But still a promising start. Double nine, see if she gets the spare here. Double nine spare to nine, open nine, open. See if Tiffany can start to fight back game one. Missy, you gotta show your shoes to the camera. That's a, uh, those are, those are probably one of, one of the hottest bowling shoes you're going to see in a, in, a, in a good, good long time, right? Tiffany up in the third frame, trying to get it going. All right. 
Tiffany finally on the board here. Tiffany gets back on the board here. Finally marking game frame three and four. Missy up, Missy up working on 79 right now. It looks good off the hand and there we go. Missy starting out strong. Missy leaked that one out. Finally, good shot on that lane. All right, Missy got a strong lead this game one. See if Tiffany can fight back. See if she can put some pressure on uh, Missy. If you're on the chat, if you're watching us on a live, chat with us. See who's in here. Havel Wright, hello. <laughs> Tiffany in frame five. All right, we got the good thing about these girls, they both got some dog in them, so. Again, Tiffany, former Vixens champ, Robin winner in April, so she knows how to fight. Bowling King, what's going on? Who do you guys like for these matches so far? Tiffany in frame six. Just a reminder, we start at 7 o'clock, though I know today. Carrie, let's go. Oh, we got ourselves a match, ladies and gentlemen. It's been smooth sailing for Missy Collins. Let's see if she can respond for herself to Tiff's double. Oh, leaked it out. Got a little bit, got a little lucky. I'm not going to lie. Nah, that was a good shot by Missy Collins. Answers Tiff double with a triple. From Nashville. Okay. Yes, best of seven from Rhode Island, New Jersey. Vixens championship match, Missy Collins versus Tiffany Smalls. Missy, four in a row. She strikes a ton. But good part is it's still not over yet. Still got a lot of game left. Big frames coming into play right now. <laughs> Tiffany Smalls in the seventh. Big shot. All right, we're getting to the tough frames now. Eight, nine, and ten is up. It's a close game. Tiffany fighting from behind, not letting the game get away from her. Missy with a strong lead. It's Missy's match to lose right now. Tiffany in the eighth, big shot here, big shot, putting the pressure on Missy to keep it going. All 
We got Missy Collins, current bowler of the year. See how she answers to the pressure in her first title defense. Big shot by Missy Collins, big shot. Looking at 79 out. These girls are fighting today. Missy Collins in the ninth to set up the tenth frame. Oh, she gets away with it. Set up the four, ten on twenty-three. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Mom? How you doing? Everything good? Former Vixens champ, Hermie Hannibal over here next to me. <laughs> Tiffany Spawn's responding in the ninth. Oh. All right. Game one will go to Missy Collins. Hi there. This is Gordon Pepper. I'm going to be bouncing around. Thanks to Ernesto Cabrera for helping me out here. And also doing some color commentary on the side. Thanks also again to the wonderful Tony Nieves on camera. And I came exactly at a time with the split, and I'm probably going to get yelled at for that. Anyway, this looks like it is game one, and it looks like that our defending champion is on a roll. Missy Collins right now, only one non-strike in the third frame. She can go out the door for 279. Tiffany, the best she can do is a 203. Hence, Missy's gonna win this one one zip. I'm here with a number of people, including former Vixens champion and Long Island and uh, Hall of Fame bowler, Ms. Hermie Hannibal. Hello. Hello. How you doing? I'm great. So, uh, you like what you're seeing so far in the, uh, this action? Yeah, very competitive, yeah. So, Ernie, what's your thoughts on game one? Well, honestly, game one, it looks, it's already over. Yeah, it's already over. Missy Collins came out strong, going about 79 out. Tiffany uh, not going to be able to break through first game, but it's best of seven. You're not going to never know what can happen in the next two games. But right now, it looks like Missy's lined up. It looks like she she's getting the carry down. She, she missed a little right. She still got away with it. Right now, everything looks good with, with Missy. So, so it's her match to lose, in, in a sense. Tiffany got some fighting to do the next couple games. Yeah, Tiffany, one of the things that I know about Missy, because I've done a couple of these matches with her bowling, she's a technical expert, and when she is lined in and locked, it is going to be very, very hard to derail her. Tiffany is going to either have to figure it out, use the same line, that ball looked good, uh, or she's going to hope for the transition quickly. If it turns into a grinder match, Tiffany's got a shot. If it stays like this, uh, Tiffany cannot afford to miss. Well, the thing is, Tiffany ne didn't necessarily throw a lot of bad shots. You know, if you look at the entire game, get frame one and frame two, it was two 10 pins that she just rang a little bit, but right in the pocket, same thing with frame four. She came in just a little bit light. She didn't throw a bad ball until about frame nine. So, you know, it's just really right now been a carry test. Yeah, the problem gets messy, and Hermie knows this more than anybody, is that you go nine out, nine out, you are asking Missy to roll over you. And in this first game, she came out with the steamroller. Absolutely, yes, yes. Yeah, right now, Missy got an early open, and she has just took full advantage of it. Now, one of the things I'm going to point out, because I spoke to Missy before the match, and she was part of the Silver Lane Express, and they changed their name to the Bolarama Express. So if anybody's asking, well, wait a second, that's a different looking jersey. That's why. It's still the same team. They just changed their name. Okay, okay. I was wondering why everything said Silver Lane Express, and then I see her jersey. I'm like, okay, Bolarama Express. Got it. I didn't know there was a Bolarama in Connecticut. <laughs> well, there, there is. I'm sure there's going to be some people saying, she's wearing the wrong jersey. No, she's not. That, that is the correct UBA apparel. And by the way, while well, I'll say that, uh, this match, as the rest of it, has been brought to you by Underground Bowling Apparel. So un go to undergroundbowling.com, check out their apparel. Uh, and then there's a definitely a lot of choices out there that you can be bowling. I see you're wearing an America's Most Wanted jersey. Absolutely. That is my current team. <laughs> I bounce around in the UBA, but this is my current team. <laughs> Oh, there you go. I'm, I'm going to give this back to uh, Ernie momentarily. At the end of game one, Missy Collins, 279. 
Tiffany Smalls, 193. Missy, your defending champions, up one zip. Back to you. Thank you very much, Gordon. Tiff starting off game two. Let's see if she could bounce back after that game one rough loss that she took. What's up, e Nix? We're here with Eric Nix. And Hermie. And Hermie. Eric Nix, what do you think about uh, this match so far? Did you see game one? Yeah, so Missy, you know, Missy strikes a lot. Strikes a ton. You know, she strikes a lot, and she don't make a lot of mistakes. Okay. So Missy's, Missy's tough. <laughs> Tiffany... When Tiffany gets it going, she could be fair. she can win this match, but she just got to stay focused and don't worry about what's going on on the carpet. If she focuses on what's going on on the lane, Tiffany can give her a run for her money. Missy, Missy's always focused on what's on the lane. Like I love the way she approaches the game because she stays focused. And she's always focused on what's going to happen on the lane, and she strikes like that. Good shot, but she just keeps it in the one three. When you keep the ball in the one three like that, it's tough to beat. Well, right now, from what I'm seeing, she's lined in as good as you could be at Lodi Lanes, all right? Lodi Lanes, the way the, the way the house plays, the way Missy's throwing the ball, you kind of want to be there the entire night. It'll help you out with the transition. Anybody that's bold here know that the transition is a little a little janky sometimes. Uh, but from what we're seeing, Tiff starts off the game strong. Missy leaves out a nice little 10 pin. Spares win games. In her bag, though. Yeah, right? I like that jersey in my bag. Well, you got to think. Right now, it's like they say, the hot hand takes you to a lot of places. So current current a bowler of the year, current champ. Her, shoe, her shoes are some of the best that, that I've seen. Custom, uh, cu custom A1 bowling shoes. She, she, she's, she's rolling on a high right now. So as long as she can keep that going, the momentum will be hers. Starting off strong with a game win one. Oh, that's a good shot though. But when you're hitting a one three like that consistently, like you know, you're gonna you're not gonna knock down ten every shot. But but the focus for me when I approach the game, I just try to hit the one three as much as possible. And when I carry, I carry. When I don't, I don't. But I just try to stay in the one three. I tell you what though, sometimes. That carry will be life or death. And right now, she just rang a 10 pin and stoned a 9 pin. That's okay. So let's see if she starts to overthink, maybe adjust a little too much, or Tiffany could jump on her right now and get you get herself a nice little three back. Change the tides of the match. See, I'm a firm believer that nerves and moments define people. So, so this is Missy's first defense, right? Uh, nah, yeah, her first defense, right? Okay. Sometimes. That first title defense could be a little nerve wracking. I'd like to see a match between Hermie and Missy. That would be funny. Yeah. I missed that. I didn't she beat. She beat. She uh. She beat you to win to win the title, right? Yeah. Black ten for two. Yep, black ten. I, I said before the match though, when I was having conversations with uh, Gordon and Rudy, I had told them that I think it's going to be a carry match because they both get to the pocket relatively consistently. So it's just going to be a matter of who can who can carry the most today. Yeah, it was it was one pin spares, but they weren't bad shots. Like I said before, she didn't throw a bad shot into the ninth frame. Spare made. Yeah, first ten pin made of the day. <laughs> Did you catch the winner of the uh, heavyweight uh, match? I think, I, think, I think it's important, so I, I watched both shots, right? And I've been watching them play. It looks like 24 is a smidge tighter than 23. So, so Missy run the 10 pin, she played the same line, and then, oh my gosh, a terrible shot. All right, so still looks a nine like, count. Looks like she grabbed that one, yeah, it's a lot of nine. Still nine count. Five pin, though. These are, these are, these are testy. I think that 23, and when I bowled on it earlier, 23, Hooking just a little bit more than 24. They did the same shot from what we were bowling on earlier. 23 hooks a little bit more than 24. That's a from Missy. Well, it would explain Missy's Missy's stone nine, yeah. Covers the five pin, all right. Got ourselves a nice little close little match. Missy strikes here. She'll go up 10. It's getting hot here, yeah. It's been hot in this corner. Usually this corner should be a little cold. Nah, this corner is hot. Yeah. 
Missy Collin, current Vixen champ, up in the third frame. Game two, up 1-0 after going 279. Smooth. Leaked it a little too much. So I think I'm right. I think that 24 is playing a little tighter. Yes. Yeah, definitely based off of that shot because she didn't miss it on the bottom. Leaked it a very little bit. She changed ball from game one. She was throwing the kinetic all game one. Kinetic is very good. One of my favorite balls on the kinetic. Yeah, Tiffany hasn't changed balls yet. She went from a kinetic to what is that? That's a UC2? No, Tiffany's using it. No, Tiffany's using a kinetic too. Yeah. Face. 23 is hooking a lot more. All right, well, Missy giving Tiffany a door to run away with game two. This is a makeable spare, though. I like, I like when I see these made. Back to the Connecticut, she almost smoothed it over. All right, Tiffany Smalls up in game two, frame four, looking to jump on a lead. If you're a UBA member on the UBA bowling page watching this match, shout out your team real quick onto the chat. Tiffany up in frame. Oh, eight count. Looks like she's having release problems. Tiffany chops the spare. No good. Well, right now at the fourth frame, Tiffany up by five, holding a five pin lead. Both girls working off of the open going into the fifth frame. Tiffany Smalls in the fifth. Seven pin, light seven pin. <laughs> Covers that spare. ourselves a new match here. Tiff, nine spare in the fifth. Missy coming up off an open. Down by five. Will she get back on? Went right back to the kinetic and struck. Yep. Don't understand why she made that original ball change. She did throw it in the fill ball, though, and, and, and it did strike. So that might have gave her some, some little false hope, maybe, that that'll be the right move. A little too early for the ball change. She went back to the kinetic and started striking again. No doubt, Ty, now I got you. Oh, and it drops. All right. Missy goes back to throwing the kinetic and doubles. See if Tiff can answer her in the sixth and seventh frame.
Tiffany in the sixth. Two four five. We got ourselves a rough match, this uh, rough game this game too. Both ladies struggling to find a line. Missy seemed to have found something in the middle of the game. Tiffany still struggling, has instructions to first frame. See if she covers the spare here. Covers the spare. Very close match still, but Missy would have, would have, if she strikes here in the seventh, could go ahead and start to run away. Fifty seven viewers on here. If you're a UBA member, shout your team, let us know where you're from, where you're watching from. Oh no. Four seven ten for Tiff. See if she can get two here. And gets none. See if Missy could jump on. If she triples here, it should give her the advantage for the rest of the match as long as she stays clean, holds on to the match. Herman, let me ask you a question. Bowling Missy for the title, when you when you uh when you gave her an open, did you notice that she always pounced on when she had an opening? Yes, she does. She's very strong. There it is, the triple that she needed for the to put this match away, game two. She can stay strong in the eighth frame and should go ahead and give her a win game two. Can't give her any openings nope. to keep her on striking. She's gonna strike on you. She got dog in her too. She knows when she knows when the door is open. Yes, she should go a lot of high games. Yes. Okay. Missy in the seventh. Oh. Makeable spare though. Makeable spare though. Turn the tides of this match. Being her, you have to go high games. Yeah, yeah. 250. Yeah, it seems you you got to be at least 240 or better to beat Missy. Exactly. And giving her opens after giving her opening after opening is not gonna not gonna benefit you in the long run. She'll get you out of here early. <laughs> yeah, you want you're gonna want to grind with her. You're gonna want to fight with her. You're gonna want to make it go back and forth. But if you give her a 2-0 lead, you might go home early. Spare made for Missy. Let's see if Tiffany can at least find something for game three and four. Ball change. Better reaction. Better carry. Hold on, I, I see the current tag team champs over there. I'm going to go see how they're doing real quick. Current tag team champions here, Nick Gavron and Audrey. How you guys doing today watching the match? All right, what's up? How, 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 when did you guys win the uh, title? When did we win it? When? Tuesday night. Tuesday night, right? Yeah. I got a question. I do, I do have a question though. I do have a question for you guys. Yeah. Are you the first couple to win the tag team match? To win the tag I'm team the title? First female, so yeah. So, yeah, so you will be the first yeah. couple, right? I, well, I mean, maybe not, but. Well, yeah, it is 2022. You never know. You never know. But I, I was thinking about that the other day. Yeah, I was like, I, first first couple do it or win the tag team yeah. challenge. That's that's a, that's a good moment. So so and, and it's good that it's tag team because now like you both can walk around the house with your title belts on and like no no no, I'm champ like you're champ. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice, nice. So now, 
So now you guys are watching the match. Clearly we see Missy out strong. What do you think Tiff needs to do to go ahead and give herself a chance to fight back? I think, I think she just needs to get comfortable. I think she's just uncomfortable right now. This is a tough pair, honestly, 23-4. And it's very not, it's not very carry friendly. So she's left a lot of 10 pins and she's like fishing and splitting. So you gotta find something that works. All right, well, that's the tag team champs. Appreciate you guys. Back over here to watch the match. Game two. All right, it's Missy's game going into the 10th frame, game two. Missy up by 32. She strikes here, she can put the game away. Ice game two, up 2-0 going into game three. Oh, no, no, that's not what you want in that moment. She still puts the game away though, right? No. Yeah, it's 50, yeah. Yeah, all right. Even with this, even with the open, Missy will take game one. Game two, game two, sorry about that. She will take game two even with the open. So let's see if Tiff can at least find something going into game three. I like, I like, I like that Tiffany changed the ball and moved in a little bit. Yes, I, I, we saw that earlier. She made the ball change and she was able to strike. The lanes are playing a little differently. Give her a little bit more back in. See, that's a better ball. I was talking over to the, to the uh, UBA Tag Team Champions over there and they said that uh, being lo the local house bowlers, you know, they bowl here a lot. They said that 23 and 24 actually is a tough carry lane. That's why you see the girls having a little trouble carrying. Do you think that's going to play a factor going into the rest of the games, or do you think Missy will be able to take Tiffany out before that becomes a factor? They're going to have to move. Yeah, Tiffany just doesn't look that comfortable today. You know, she keep looking down at her feet, looking down at her hands. Looks like she's having some trouble getting out of the ball. But that's tough when you're bowling on bowler like Missy Collins, because she is going to step on every single opportunity that you give her. Yeah, I saw. So now, Eric Nix, what team are you on uh, UBA now? Dream Team still. Dream Team still, all right. And how, uh, you guys are in the New Jersey North? In the New Jersey North. We took the season off. You took the season off? I, I didn't bowl league this year. I didn't bowl anything this year. I just um, I just um, needed to focus on my daughter getting off to college. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Then next year, I'll, I'll, I'll re-engage again. Um, I, need, I needed to focus on, on that, but um, and rebuild my team. Okay. So, you know, but yeah, we're still alive and we'll come back next year stronger than ever. Yeah? Dream again next year. Yeah. <laughs> we're like Missy, the, here, like, frame one. We're like the dream team when we started losing. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, it looks like, uh, from what I've seen lately, the New Jersey North has been dominating a lot of the UBA season tours. You had the DGF winning a champion, winning a couple championships. Murder Inc. Yeah, Northwest. Murder Inc. won last year. So, do you think the South pulls off a UBA uh, a season tour championship anytime soon, or do you think that the North? is really the South, the South running got, away with it. The South got really good bowlers. I think that the South teams have all sporadic bowlers spread out. In 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 the New Jersey in the New Jersey division, especially with DGF, like they was they they've been stacked for so many years and they got all good bowlers stacked up. And I think that in order for somebody to dethrone New Jersey, 
they gonna have to get they gonna have to do with with Kevin Durant and and Steph Curry and them did they gonna have to all team up. So unless the South builds a crew that's gonna come and compete with New Jersey, it's gonna be tough. Cause we saw Hitman compete and look like they were gonna compete. But then it looks like the nerves got to him a little bit during the uh, during that match against Murder Inc. And it just kind of shows that I feel like the culture is a little different. You know, from what we've seen in the past, it looks like just the culture is a little different. When you get a team that not only can bowl but can also talk and has a big carpet uh, uh, background, it makes it tough for the other team to to go ahead and 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 get over that that obstacle. Tiffany struggling here again in game three. She's, um, she's throwing the new ball is very much so like she's been throwing the UC ball. She's playing a little bit more direct. She can give this ball, the new ball, a little bit more room and rely on it, and rely on it to do, do the job. But she's, she's like forcing it to the 1-3 and it's overreacting on the end. She did that in, she did that in, um, she did that in the, in the last game and she just did it here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough, man. Let me tell you, the, the one thing I uh, tell you about Missy consistently, she will consistently keep hitting the one three. She's not going to carry every shot, but what makes her difficult to beat is she just keeps hitting the she keeps hitting the pocket over and over again. And just when your part when your opponent makes the mistake, and you, then you go three four in a row and get the game. And that's Absolutely. and that's how she's that's how she's the Vixen champ. Absolutely. So let's see what Missy does here. Frame two. I like I like her to strike. Here. You like her to strike here. I think that when you give her opening, when you give, when you give most bowlers openings like this, it's, it's, it's tough. Ah, ring 10, that was a good shot though. I wanted to call 10 pin, but I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to jinx it. It, it. It's one thing you call a 10 pin when it's a flat 10, but you can't predict when the ball is going to wrap around a 10 like that. That's just a, that's just a true tap. So the 10 pin kind of lifted off the board a little bit. Yeah, so it, it, it went around. It didn't lay down in the gutter. No, it didn't lay down in the gutter. No, no. It wasn't a flat. See if Missy can cover the 10 pin here. Spares win games, obviously. T Morgan wants to go away that bowl and TD grab load out lanes in the jersey. The hottest tournament house in New Jersey, honestly, between Parkway Lanes and Lodi Lanes. Everything is bold here. Don't you feel like every tournament is here? Everything is bold here. No. I, 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 that's why I like to run my events other than elsewhere than although I do have an event here next Sunday. But I like to run my events someplace else because I feel like every tournament is at home. Yeah. See, but that also makes it for a very interesting match because both bowlers do bowl here. You know, neither one of them are necessarily a fish out of water. They're they're familiar with these lanes, familiar with the way they're oiled. So it makes for a very good match. But right now, it just seems that Tiffany is not comfortable in her shot on either lane. Yes, she did. That's why the, that's why she struck she struck and, 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 and carried a mixer. She moved a little bit left because she recognized that it's a hook. Hook. 2-4-5. She's not comfortable. You could just tell. Yeah, you could just tell that she's really not comfortable right now. You know, she's, I don't know if it's if it's her hand. I don't know if it's the ball. I don't know if it's her approach. But every after every shot, she's looking down. She's looking at her hand. She just doesn't look to be being able to get out of the ball right now. <laughs> Two four five. <laughs> Two four five. One thing I, one thing I want to say about Tiffany, is she came a long way though. Like so, you know, she's the, um, the um, current reigning women's Rodman champion. Yeah, that's what I mentioned before the match that you know you, you, you really can't count that's either one of these girls. That's a, that's a good job. That's a way to come back, Tiff. But she, and she's just grown. She's like Tiff grown, grown. Like she she's progressed a lot over the last couple of years from from where she was. So. Well, Missy as well. Right now, I feel like we're looking at a lot of the future of of women's of women's bowling in the area. I mean, you know, these are two women that are in the area that are making a name for themselves right now. Why do you think? Why do you think that there's not more? Women competing for the Vixen like the, like like they used to. Honestly, I don't know because I remember the days. That's why. That's why. 
bad shot there. She Le leaked it a little early. Uh, I remember the days of Robin and Danielle and, you know, those big matches at Carolier. And, you know, it, it, I feel like it's getting there. It's getting back there. Think so? Little by little, it's getting back there, you know? Yeah. States, so it was a lot of money. Yeah, well, you're, I was just about to say, you, you have a lot of obstacles nowadays. Traveling is more expensive. Tolls are high. You know, a lot of people don't want to go so far for a, for a four-game match. You know, it could, be, it could be many reasons as to why things aren't building up the way they are. But as you can see, a lot of the younger talent is here bowling for belts, putting a name for themselves, trying to make themselves in the UBA, and, and it's coming out for good matches. It's coming out to good matches and good moments. So you remember the days when these type of matches was right after the tour stops? And yes. You had the whole team hanging around and watching and supporting their bowlers and everybody's yelling. Well, I remember, I remember, well, I think it was a three-way match. If, if, if you Correct me if I'm wrong. It was a three-way match between Danielle Marino, Robin, uh, uh, Bushi, uh, Robin Bushini. Robin Bushini. Excuse me, Algeri. Who's Algeri now? Oh yeah, Algeri now. And um, she used to bowl for DGF. Oh, that's got a hole. That's got a oh uh, yeah. Bad lead. She's, she's she used still... to bowl for DGF. It was it was a three female match, and the crowd at Carolier was about three four rows deep to watch these girls bowl. It was a, it was an amazing it was an amazing feeling to watch that match. So she gave the open right, she gave the hole right back. Yes, she did. That's the problem. It's like they're, they're going tip for tat right now, and it seems like Missy's just coming out one frame better. When you get a point, when, when a bowl like Missy gives you an opening, you have to take full advantage of it. You, you got to step on her neck. You can't, leave, you can't let her hang around because you already know at some point she's going to give you three or four in a row. Every game, just about, Missy will give you three, four in a row. So when she gives you an opening, you got to take advantage of it. And if she can, if, if that, what happened on clean 24 for Missy was just a hyperbole. It, wasn't, it, wasn't, it isn't something that she's struggling. She just leaked that shot out on 24. She should have three in a row right now. Yeah. See? She's pulling it. She's, she's, she's got away with that one. So, so I, all right. Let me let me let me just break let me just break this down with you. What's, what's, what's happening with Tiffany? Tiffany was using a UC UC two or UC three, whatever she was using before, or the kinetic or whatever she was using. The ball was a little bit weaker, and it allowed her to play more direct. When she switched to the new ball, she didn't change her arm swing. So if you look at her arm swing, she's still pulling it like she's using the the, 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 the the kinetic that she was using and that's why she keeps going through the face and and and, and turning it and leaked it again ooh, leaked, leaked it, it again. again she changed balls she, she did change so, balls so she changed balls but, but you know what though she didn't need to change balls because what she did on the on in frame four wasn't a matter of ball problem it was it was her that threw the ball back. She just threw that ball back. It wasn't that the ball reacted wrong or anything. That she leaked right. it out way too early. So that making a ball change probably is what caused this to happen. Correct. Because that's an ugly leave. That's just the ball did not do anything you wanted it to do. Correct. Oh shoot! I almost made it. <laughs> well, we got ourselves a little bit of a game now. I feel like this game is if Tiffany can, if, if Tiffany can double here and Missy doesn't strike but even if she leaves a nine spare but if Tiffany can double here she can set herself up to run away with the match giving her a little bit of a comeback 2-1 I think I think that um, on this on this shot for Missy she needs to figure out, she needs to flush one and then figure out what she's doing on, that's a good shot. That was a really good shot. She needs to figure out what's happening on 24. Yeah. Tiffany right now, this is Tiffany's game. Tiffany needs to, to open her shoulder, give the ball room. She's tugged the last couple. Every time she's missed, she's tugged the ball. No. That's the only thing she's lacking right now because, you know, in order to win a, a tournament like the Robin, you need to be able to hit, you need to be able to be consistent. That's a good shot. Right here, right now. There you go, Tiff. That is a big shot. Like we mentioned earlier, Tiff has the dog in her as well. 
big shots coming up right here. She's got to do it. If she can triple here, she will change the face of the match, possibly give her a nice little momentum into the frame 9 and 10, forcing Missy to, to, to strike in frame 8 to give her a chance to continue to run with Tiffany. So let's see what goes on here. But Missy coming up to bowl is on her bad lane. If Tiffany strikes here, it almost puts Missy in a must strike position. Like Missy's gonna have to strike on gonna her bad it. lane. On her bad lane. Yep. She hasn't struck it on that lane yet this game. Good shot. Good shot. Hey, and she gets the carry. And, and so the reason why I call it good shot. The reason why I call it a good shot from the very beginning is because the number 23 is hooking a little more. If that was 24, that would have been a washout. Yes, 2 4 5 would probably. Absolutely. Tiffany Smalls putting the pressure on Missy Collins. To see what she could do on lane 24. She's been struggling on it all game. See if she makes the adjustment that she needs to to give herself a chance to fight in this game. Missy in the eighth. Good shot. That's a big shot. That is a big shot. Way to respond. It's Got ourselves a nice match in game three. Missy up 2-0, trying to take a 3-0 lead. But like Tiff not going away yet. I like how the strike is in here. Put the pressure on, put the pressure on Tiff. Does she have the oh, nerves? Yeah. That is a good shot. Oh, carry to four. Carry to four. Missy striking in the ninth, telling Tiffany that I am not going away. <laughs> we didn't see Anthony Bonanno trip fours for a very long time. <laughs> Tiffany need a big strike here in the ninth frame. Put her away in the tenth if she could, but let's go one frame at a time. Tiffany in the ninth. Get the ball down the lane. Tiff. Get the ball down the lane. Oh, hold it a little. Wait, but it might hold. Oh, hold it. Number one, she rushed. Yeah, she did rush. She rushed it. She rushed it. And she was very off balance. You could see, like, it's so important when you, when you need a really, when you need a shot. Just gotta take your extra time. There's no need to rush. It's important. It's important when you're bowling these matches to ignore the carpet. Take your time. Make your opponent sit down an extra few minutes, an extra few seconds. Oh no. Oh no. All right. Plastic. If that ball, if that ball was resin, it was not. It was not. It was not. It wasn't gonna look good. Hermie, I don't know about you. Ernest, I don't know about you. I never try to make the spear like that. If I make the spear like that, I missed. Listen, I'm not. I, I'm a chop king, so anything that has that type of angle, I try to stay away from. I just <laughs> spare ball dead straight if I can. <laughs> the three, the three, three, six, ten. I never try to make it outside of the three. Tiff in the ten. Seems she could put a little bit of pressure on Missy. That's a big shot. Make her earn it. So right now, Tiffany punches out. It's two and three. If Missy punches out, yes, 12-pin match, Missy's favor. See, but this is this is a the, this is what bowling is about, though. Tiff up, she had the game, but she, but she's still not out. She can still throw three good shots in the attempt to put the pressure and force Missy to at least double. Another good shot. Another good shot. Off the hand, put the pressure on her. Show her you're not gone. Let's go, Tiff. Now, the question is, can Missy close her out on her bad lane? So she flushed one the last, last frame in the eighth. Can she close her out in the tenth frame on the bad lane? That's well, well, that's the testament of a champion, isn't it? To see, you, you, you know that you're struggling. You know that you're struggling on one on one lane and you got to finish on it all right you're down 46 with a potential 60 pins that you can pick up right now she needs the first one he's the first one he's the first one in count the eight count is going to hurt tiffany a little bit if missy strikes she doesn't need she doesn't need to get nine she doesn't need to get nine no she just needs she doesn't need count so let's see if Missy can defend her title here in game three. First ball. Off the hand, that looks good. And that's a big shot. 
That is a big shot. That's a championship frame right there. That is a championship oh frame. Because she needed that strike. She put that 10 back. Off the hand, flush. She is definitely in her bag. Jeez. Uh, you couldn't have threw, I don't think she could have thrown a better ball. Do you remember her song? No. No, you weren't there. And um, we tied, we tied the seven game. We need to roll off in the center frame. We saw one. Oh, oh, leaked that one out, but might have got away with it. With the carry, Missy in game three, up 3-0. So, let me ask y'all this. You put yourselves in a 3-0 position. Do you lay down, go home, or do you really, really stay and try? For, for me, it's one game at a time. It, it becomes one game at a time, but when you're up 3-0, the only thing in your head that needs to be going on is start strong. Because yeah. everybody knows that, that, a, that a, bowling mat, a bowling game is 10 frames long. It's first six and it's back six. But if you're up 3-0 and you can start out with a triple, you put something into the other bowler's head where it's... <laughs> See, but, but it's like... Yeah, because you, you got to want, you want to start strong. You want to start where the other bowler thinks, all right, damn, I'm not only, not only am I just down 3-0, but I'm down 3-0 and she's still striking. So right now, Missy is in a spot to be able to sweep, hold her belt, if she can continue to bowl the way she's been bowling. Both bowlers have been struggling, but Missy's been able to come through each time that the door has been opened for her to walk through. I would like, I would like for Tiffany to show some heart and really like, put together a solid game here. Let's go, Tiff, to start off strong. Strike. Huh? If Tiffany can show some life here, we might have ourselves a nice little match. But. It is Missy's to lose right now. Three up, 3-0. Three, oh. First title defense against former Vixens champ, Tiffany Smalls. She bowled, they bowled before, and I believe Missy won. I don't know what the count was, but I know that they bowled before and Missy won. Okay. Here at Lodi as well. Good shot again. Looks like she's figured out, friend. looks like she's figured that lane out. She's figured that lane out. She's tough. <laughs> I bowl. I bowl once a month. <laughs> so Married bowl. life and, and newborn life forces me to bowl once a month. So this is a sport that I love, and and I know that in order for me to compete, I have to practice. So I find myself to practice five to seven games a week, no matter what. Like I have to do it, or I wouldn't be able to compete. Ring in seven. Please. Ernesto, oh look, somebody else's name is Ernesto. Uh, Ernesto Janieri. Uh, right now, Missy is up 3-0 in a best of seven series. So if Missy wins this game, she goes home with a sweep, defending her title in the first title defense. Or can Tiffany come back? Well, it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen a classic walk down. We've seen them happen before. That's why I got a name. So let's see if Tiff got the classic walk down in her. It's all, I've always liked to see those. I'm not going to lie. When somebody's down 3-0, even if they lose in seven, but if they, if they win the next three to force the game seven, it's a beautiful feeling. And got away with it. Pulled it and got away with it. Listen, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you right now, I'm the type of bowler where you can give me 12 of those and I'll be happy. You give me 12 of those and I will be happy. I'm going to be honest with you, I have, to, I have to totally disagree with you on that. Like, when you're bowling a match like this, you know you're not going to carry 12 in a row like that and you don't want, when you're throwing it that bad, when you throw a ball that bad and you have to cross over the strike, something is really, really off. Like, I don't know. Will Watson, what's going on, brother? Tiffany in frame three off of a double. Tug that one too. See, something is really bad, but gotta learn to get you out. Will Watson, what up, my guy? 
Missed you today. Where you was at? You're supposed to come out to load out and bowl, bro. Everybody was out here but you, William. Well, I don't see your name on my list for next week's mixed doubles, bro. What's, what's going on? Grab a female, come bowl, mixed doubles, bro. In the bed. You in the bed? Ain't no money in the bed, bro. Well, that's debatable. Uh, <laughs> Dude, bit. Almost, almost missed that one. Let's see what Missy could do in frame three. Although Tiffany has a, uh, the lead right now, you can't feel comfortable with two crossover shots. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. Can. that because Missy is not going to keep Missy. Missy, Missy left a flush seven pin on on 24. She flushed one, so she's throwing the ball really good. Tiffany got a break. She has an early lead, but I just don't know that you can feel comfortable throwing the ball like that. Well, you can win. Well, I'm going to be honest. But looking at this match from game one, oh, good shot. Missy has been consistently throwing the ball very good off of the hand, hitting her line. She suffered from momentary lapses in judgment, or maybe, maybe a leak here, maybe a leak there. But the entire match, she's been extremely consistent, as opposed to Tiffany has been up and down, tugging shots, missing opens, single pin spares. Uh, you know, it, it hasn't necessarily just been her day. Some days, it's not your day. And it's, uh, that's just the simple, the simple science of bowling. Some days, you just don't got it. No. Missy in frame four. Oh, no, tripping the 4-9. Wow. Murdering member Mush over there with a, with a quesadilla in his hand. Same shot as 24, but because 23 is hooking so much more that it checked and kicked the four. She got lucky she didn't leave a 4-9 because it was there. It was. She tripped both four and the nine. Tiffany, Tiffany needs a shot here. Tiffany needs to strike here. Now, oh, that's and that's good off the hand. Oh, chucked up just a little early. Maybe she was a little light on it on speed. Yep, 13-7 instead of the normal 14-15 that she rounds with throw. So about a little, about half a mile a little slower than what she normally does. Checks up on her. I'm going to tell you right now, though, if Missy strikes in frame five and six, you can go ahead and pack this away. Because I, 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 from what we've seen so far in the last three games, I don't see Tiff striking out from five to ten. You get what I mean? She's certainly capable. She's capable of it. She's capable of fighting here and, and stringing a couple to give her the rest of the match. But like we said, Missy's been consistent off of each shot that she's laid in this game so far. So let, let's see if she can run away with it. Tugged it again. This is what I was saying. This is what I was saying. She's been too inconsistent today to put faith that she's going to get a couple strings. So now when you're when, in Missy's case, right, you're the champion. You're defending. You're up 3-0. You're going out 80 again because she went out 79 game one. So clearly she's found another line. When you are able to bowl with this type of lax, you get away with missing right. You get away with missing left. You get away with little things like that because you're in the driver's seat. I would love, to, I would love to see, I would love to figure out a way to put more money into the singles for everybody, and 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 make and make more people compete in in the singles and in the Vixens champion and then even in the men's side too, to the point where if, if if they can somehow figure out a way to get more money in, and then everybody starts to join up. That would be cool. And I think that another way to get people to join up too is to start having these matches after the after this tour stops. Yes. Because then you'll have people already here engaged. Oh, see? Huh? It's not over yet, but it's still Missy's match to lose. You got you got Missy over here seventh in the in the fifth frame, but Tiff hasn't struck since the second frame. Missy can cover the spare here. She's still in good shape to win the game. No, 
All right, Spares win game. Missy with a two pin lead going into the sixth frame. Game four with a 3-0 lead in her first title defense. See how she starts off the second half of the game. So Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany just explained to us in the back that um, the reason for, um, the reason for, um, I I'll address that in a second. The reason, the reason why she keeps touching the ball is she's a little injured. Okay. So that makes that makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. My God. Missy, they, she, and she chuck and she tucked the one on 24 too. So tuck, tuck, both tuck jobs on, on, on the last two frames here. Could she be getting laxed with a 3-0 lead? So could she be taking advantage of the 3-0 lead and kind of like taking a game off? You think? Let me address this uh, division thing. So I think that, and I think I had this conversation with Tynell and Phil a while ago. Someone asked, um, "How do you cover? Missy covers so, how do you cover so many divisions?" How you cover the divisions is if you treat it, if you if you do the format the same as you do the tour matches, right? So whoever, so the singles people bowl, and is and is, is different from the spirit of the belt, but the tour matches should be should should mirror the singles. So if you're bowling, so if, in other words, if I'm bowling against DGF, if, if Dream Team is bowling against DGF, the singles from the singles should be lined up, the schedules should be lined up like that as well, instead of bowling. The next matches up, or or instead of it being position rounds, and every every match every week is a tour uh, is for the belt. I think that the belt should exchange hands at Battle Bowl, and I think that it should be one. It should be or or the belt should exchange hands at Battle Bowl or Mega Bowl, but I don't think that they should exchange hands on a on a random Sunday the week before Thanksgiving. Like, it, it, the belts exchange hands too much. If you make it an entire season, and then you, and you do it by divisions, and then, that, then that, the one single person or the, or the, or the top, top people in each division come out, and then you give them even more of a reason to have a showdown at Battle Bowl. So I think that's the way to do it, to schedule it that way, and that way you have more support from everybody's individual teams, and, and it'll be a little bit more exciting. And then I think more people will get in that way. But the way it is right now, you're not having a lot of you're not having a lot of competition because it's, it's like Missy has to travel from Connecticut to All bowl the way here, to Lodi, to, to just Lodi to bowl here. on a random. You know, some people are gonna be like, you know, she's a bowling fanatic and she likes to go anywhere. But a lot of people are like this does not economically doesn't make sense for her to do that. I've been traveling before. I went to Delaware. Right. I went to Jersey, Connecticut to bowl her the last time. I'm always traveling. Yeah. So, so I think that if you make it more enticing for the bowlers to join in, then you'll get more people in. I know I was, I was when, I, when they first started the singles I was in, and then I realized when they changed it and they started making us travel random places, I bowled, I bowled a singles match on a Wednesday at Carolier at 7 o'clock in the afternoon, like it was, I mean, 7 o'clock in the evening, and it was nobody there to watch. Like, that's not, that wasn't the spirit of what the singles used to be. I remember bowling matches. I bowled a match after a last UBA season. stop. Yeah, last two standing. Unholy. I remember me, like I remember me and Hans would bowl a match right after tour stop at Bowler City, and both teams stood around. Missy, we're opening in the eighth frame here, might be able to give Tiffany a chance to win game four. I would like to see Tiffany win. I want to see Tiff win a game here. I want to see her fight back and win a game and see what happens in game five, you know? But everything you are saying does hold merit, Eric. It does hold merit. The World Championship Series needs to be able to figure out a way to get other people entertained and involved into the World Championship Series. But like I said, we still have a lot of good talent here. Oh, good shot. The fight still is there. That fight is still there. I think Tiffany gets this game. Yes, Tiffany right now is in the driver's seat to win game four. Now here's, here's, here's the thing I want to say. When you're up 3-0 and you don't close them out, you run into problems. Yes, because, because the beginning of a walk down is always losing game four. So right now, let's see what Tiff does to put the game away in frame nine. That's a good, good shot, shot off the hand. Good shot. No, that is a big strike. That's the game. And that should be the game. Should be the game. No, that's the game. No, you never know what could happen in the 10th. Tiffany opens, she's in the 220s. Right? Right now, she's in the 250s. If she opens in the 10th, she's in the 220s. Best missing can shoot is 211. You're right. You are right. Thomas Burwell, what up? Thomas Burrell, what up? Rooting for Tiffany. 
Missy here, big strike in the ninth. All I will tell you is in these singles matches, you never know. Yeah. In these singles matches, you never know what can happen. You never know what can happen. Harmony, where, Har Herman, Herman, where are you on the list? Well, next on the list. You're next? Because there's nobody on the list. So, oh, there's nobody on the list. So you bowl, so you bowl, so you bowl the winner of this. Yes. I would, I would just love to see all the divisions, right? At the end of it, right? And then all the women from the South who make it out of their divisions, all of the women from the Northeast, all of the women from New York, Connecticut, and wherever the UBA, and then meet up at Battle Bowl and battle it out. That would be very, very interesting. I would love to see that. I think people, I think that would be exciting. Big shot. Big shot. Nah, I'm a big fan of the UBA, so they don't have to pay me anything. Nah, I'm a big fan of the UBA. I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan of the UBA. They don't have to pay me anything. Not all about the money. That's right. So you're next on the list. So you bowl the winner of this match. Do you know when that? You know when that's gonna be? Is it gonna be this out of the year or next year? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, so she did. So she did strike out to get to the 211. Tiffany just needs good count here. Good shot. Game over, Tiffany. That's it, tip avoid. No sweep here. Sweep. Let's see if she can claw back. Nick, what up, Nick? <clears throat> What's good, my guy? Nicholas Rivera. What's up, bro? What's going on with you, man? This is kind of fun. I think I'm going to do this again with y'all. Hey, man. Come on through. Ah. Avoids the sweep in game four. So here's, so. Dupree, what's up, Pete? Dupree. So here's the thing I'll tell y'all. When you down, when you up 3-0, I was going to say this before. When you up 3-0 and you don't close out, and you give, your, you give your, oppo your, your opponent some confidence, and they start to strike, could turn into a match. If, 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 if Tiffany takes this one game at a time, you never know. Right now it's 3-1. That's why originally I said when you're up 3-0, you want to be able to jump on your opponent early. You don't want to let them live. You don't want to let them breathe. You don't want to get that extra confidence going. All right? I've won a lot of matches down 3-0. Just because you give me enough life, I'll continue to try and strike. Yeah, I agree. I like to see this match. The, the, the reason, look, you have 95 people watching. You have a whole carpet full of people who are back here cheering. This is the spirit of the UBA. This, having one-on-one -on -one matches, nobody around watching, that's not the spirit of, that's not what the UBA was built on. Got to get back to the entertainment part of it. Yeah, uh, Mush, Mush eat from Murder, Inc. eating a quesadilla and his wife, Peter, is definitely the entertainment bring back to it. With one shoe on. With one shoe on, that's right. This is game five strong with a strike in frame one. Let's see if Tiffany can pick up where she left off last game. Let me go over here and uh, speak to the current champ. Missy, how you doing? Good, good, good. We're here with the UBA TV. You're up 3 1. All right, starting off game five. Do you feel like you're doing anything different? Do you feel like you still have your line that you've been playing from game three? No. No? I, I'm, I'm throwing it a little more out. I had to move left a little bit, but I'm not too worried. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what, though. We're talking over there. You throw one hell of a ball. Thank you. Got you. How you guys doing? Back with the with the UBA tag team champs. You think Tip you think Tip got enough to 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 come back here down from 3-1? I think Tip can do it. Think Tip can do it? Yeah. I think so. 
She looks like she's a little lined up as well. Tiffany held, held the spear. I seen you over there talking to Audrey Snell. Is, is considering joining the list? Um, I asked her and she said she's not sure yet. She's actually enjoying herself as being the UBA Tag Team Champions with her boyfriend, Nick Gavron. I had asked them earlier on in the match. I said, actually, now that I think about it, you guys might be the first UBA Tag Team Champion that's a couple. <laughs> That we know of. That we know of, yes, because it's 2022. You never know. Things things could get crazy. So, But of course, the UBA accepts of everybody, so we, it wouldn't be a problem if it happened. Missy here in frame two, looking to see if she can double and put a little bit of pressure on Tiff, who's fighting back from three, down 3-1. Three, oh, that's why. That's why. Left the 10 pin. It'll make it back. When you cover that much ground and you, and you come and you come in late on the head thing like that, almost guaranteed to leave the dime. Yep, look, correct. First couple to be the first to be the unlimited tag team champions. There you go. Congratulations to them. Yeah, I couldn't bowl with my wife. Couldn't bowl with my wife. Absolutely not. Or just somebody who, who picked up the game and very quickly as well. Yes, she did. She was, I remember when she first started out, she was, she was really, really passionate about it. Now she competes with all the girls. She's pretty tough. And of course, you have Nick Gavron, which we like to call Slim Jesus. That guy throws a very, very good ball. I don't see him struggle in many houses. <laughs> Nick, is, Nick is also a great bowler. See what we got Missy here in frame three of game five. Holding on to a 3-1 lead. I would, love, I would love to know how much hair product they spend on in a crib. Between the both of them, they spend a lot of hair on hair product. <laughs> the UBA can promote them and get a head and shoulders contract, I promise you. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> Missy here in frame three, see if she can respond. Good shot. Oh, I checked up on her, checked up on her. Got 23. 23 is hooking. So many, you have so many, you have so many good girls in the area. You have Davida, you have Candice hand watching. Of course, you have the Hall of Famer Hermie. Ooh, Ooh open there. Oh the no. Hall of Famer, of course, Hermie Hannibal here. You have um, Onisha Smith. You have, you have Audrey Chanel, just Nicole, Nicole Toto. Nicole Toto. We have so many tough girls. Like the Vixen list should be strong. Like, like, and we're talking a lot about the New Jersey girls, but let's not forget about the girls in New York. Well, well, of course, yeah. Girls in the air yeah. If we can get the, if we can get the Marinos and and you know the the the, the, the Kayla Jones is back into yeah. into the fold. Another great bowler. Another great bowler. Christina Turpo. Christina Turpo. Another one. Yeah. We'd we be able to get back to the glory days of the Vixen, of the Vixens division. We'd be, we'd be asking too much to get Amanda Bros back on them. Yes, I might be might be asking a little too much. <laughs> You know who I said I'd like to see oh. bowl uh, hey, listen, the Vixens Championship Series? Jennifer Russo. I love, yeah, Jennifer would definitely. I'd love to see her bowl. Yeah, I would, I would. Yeah, so. So, so I just want you guys to pay attention. So Tiffany is up a boatload in this game. It's a different atmosphere right it's now. It's changing. The atmosphere is definitely the, changing right now. Momentum is heavily in Tiffany's favor, although she, she's down 3-1. She seems like she's getting comfortable. She's striking a lot. Missy's trying to figure it out. I don't know. Can Missy get her life back in frame four? Good off the hand. Is it going to hold? Yes, it will. Good carry. Good shot. She's not going away yet. But right now, it seems like whatever was bothering Tiff has subsided. She is up in game five after winning game four. There you 
Missy, a frame five. Big shot here, not going away. Missy Collins is not going away. This is exactly what we were looking for in game five. Missy not going away, doubling in frame four and five. Leaving it up to Tiff to answer here in frame five, coming off a triple. See what she could do coming down from three, one. She won last game. She's trying to force a game six. Here we are. That's right, Kev. This is Tiff's chance to take the charge of the game. You know who has, you know who has really strong bowlers? Women. Oh, big shot from Tiffany, four in a row. The region that has really strong bowlers for women, too, is the, is the DMV area. Yes, they oh definitely do. They're really tough down there. DMV and the South. Of course. The likes of Emily Kyle. DMV's tough. Cross. Baby split. Baby split. DMV, Daphne Smith, Casey Parnell, Jax. That's right. All of these women bowlers. Good women bowlers. Look, uh, women bowlers that you could bet against the men. Carla, Carla, yeah, 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 I'll take them against the men. Carla Pieri. Too. Yes, Carla Pieri, yes. So many tough women down there. Oh, open. Temporary door back. If hey, I'll tell you what though. If Missy can strike in frame six and frame seven, she might turn the turn the tide of this match around. So if, that open might have cost him. So if you look at it, if both if both bowlers strike out, we'll have a tie match. Yes, it's a tie match right now. See if Missy can answer here in frame six. Talk about that door. It looks good. That's a big shot from the champ. So good. So good. And it's like we've been saying all match, when Tiffany gives Missy an opening, she handles it every single time. If she can strike here in the seventh, she sets herself up into a position to force Tiff to continue to strike. Let's have some fun, fun in the chat. Everybody listening in the chat, Put, it, put in the chat your favorite female bowler that you would love to see on the Vixens list. Oh, that was a good shot, but a ringing 10-pin from Missy Collins, leaving this game still too close to call. I just, want, I, just want, I just want to see what everybody thinks about who their favorite female bowler they would like to see on the Vixens list. Turpo is definitely one. Definitely Turpo, Will. Definitely Turpo. So tough. I remember watching. Bell, of course. I remember watching uh, Turbo bowl when she was with SWAT. I don't know if she's still on SWAT, but um, I remember her bowling with SWAT being a tough match. Nicole Trudell, Margaret Taylor, Margaret, Margaret Taylor, Taylor, yes. Nikki Van Gordon, yes. Nikki. Or uh, Vicky Spratford. Yeah, Vicky. Vicky Spratford as well. Yes, Candice Little, of course. Patty, Patty Hanlon, Yo, yes. Let me tell you something. Patty's a great let bowler. Let me talk about Patty. Patty's Patty a great is a bowler. great bowler. When she gets, when she ha when she gains the confidence, Patty could be very, very tough. Oh, oh, oh tripped, four. A, tripped the four nine. She tripped the nine too. Come on, y'all, give me some more lanes. I see Candice. Robin Algieri. Candice Little, of course. Like we all know, what Candice does on the lanes. I'm going to be honest and say Nicole Toto. Nicole I would like to see Nicole Toto on the list. I'm going to tell you. Tell you she is you. tough as nails. You know who You know who always wins my women's tournament? I love to see Vonnie too, Will. Kathleen Weissman is a tough bowler. Oh, Kathleen Weissman, yes. Weissman. Yes, 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 yes. Vonnie's tough, of course Vonnie's tough. That's my, that's my homie, I won't crack no jokes on Vonnie right now. I'd love to see, see Vonnie, of course. That's my homie. Vonnie's in a different space right now, but yeah, we'd love to see her on the list. Come on, give me some more names, give me some more names, y'all. Is it Wheeler? Oh, listen, Segura Wheeler. She's probably one of the best, if, if not the best, she's one of the best DMV bowlers. Segura's tough. Samantha Shaden. Yeah, of course, Sam. 
Hardcore Sam. Is there a UBA team in every state? Almost. <laughs> Almost every state. We got pretty much from uh, what? We got all, most of the DMV, the Carolinas. Is there a team? Is there a team out of Atlanta? There's not a team in Atlanta. Yet. I don't think so. I'm not sure. Tynell, Tynell's listening. Tynell, is there a team in Atlanta? Uh, but I'm almost positive that there's teams all up and down the East Coast, except for that, you know, certain area right before you get to Florida. I'm almost positive UBA is in Florida as well, but it's not as big up. Ah, Crystal Shore. Sagira, Emily Kyle, Tiffany Bell, yeah, of course. In a oh, triple threat match. Oh, yeah, I would love to see that. I, I, I'd probably pay money to see that. We need WC to Florida. I'm going to be honest and say Nico Rivera wasn't that entertaining of a champion when he was champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He's probably, I'm going to Dougie, he's probably one of the most entertaining champions. He, he, he was not as entertaining as people might make him out to be. All right. <laughs> Nico, was, Nico was hilarious. Bro. Just got off of the cruise. I would like to see Paige as well. Oh, this is a good shot from Tiffany. Ooh, flat 10. Does she get the roll? Roll. Nope, doesn't get the roll. Right now, Tiffany is up a mark. If she spares this, she'll be up a mark. Going Anything into going into the 10th frame. Yeah, going into the 10th. Throws a double to shut her out of the 10th. Best. Best uh, missing the shoot is 24. Tiffany has 235 out with a spare hair. Hold on to the spare. She struggled with those earlier. 10 pin made. Come on, anybody else? Any other names that we're missing? Any other names that we're missing on the Vixen list? Um, on the Vixen's list, I think we're missing, I think we might be missing a couple names actually. Yes, the Baltimore lady. Paige, Paige is great. Paige yeah, Martin Paige, is dope. Yeah. Definitely Paige is dope. Oh. Uh, okay. Tiffany here in the 10th frame. The oh, oh, five, five pin. Nobody safe. Anybody got a bottle of potter? <laughs> oh, Cumberbatch. Yeah, I would like to. Oh, Rhonda. Rhonda McNair. Thanks, Thomas. Rhonda McNair. BLB. I would see if we, if we could figure out a way to get all these ladies in. We could make this really, really entertaining. Kayla Meadows. Oh my God. She would be fun to watch make a run for the UBA championship. Of course. Of course. She strikes a ton, too. Kayla Meadows. Oh, well, look at that Alyssa Burke. Alyssa Burke, too. Alyssa Burke strikes a lot. I would like to see Alyssa. In, I would like to see Alyssa in it. Oh, Terry Bollinger. Terry Bollinger, yeah. Terry's always on the list, All right, Tiff over here. Big shot for Tiffany. Big shot for Tiffany at a 224. Worst case scenario, we are looking at a tie. Can Missy force game five into a roll off? Tiffy, Missy's game here to roll to, to oh, turn it into a roll off. Let me ask you a question. Anybody in the chat thinks uh, Tiffany, of course, Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany yeah. I would That's a name, Amanda Nardella. <laughs> Amanda, Nardella. <laughs> Amanda Nardella. Amanda Nardella. Missy here, bring one. Big shot, forcing a tie. Carson, nobody mentioned Carson Lacosis. No, nobody mentioned her either. I would like to see a match between, those are really good friends, they, they go together. And I would like to see Amanda Nards though. I, I, matter of fact, thinking about it now. I, yo, listen. Seeing Carson, her make a run for the WCS would Carson be really Le fun. Carson Lacosha is one of the best female bowlers on the East Coast. She is really good. I would love to see Carson on the list. Carson Lacosha. Missy needs to double here to force a tie. Big shot. Big shot. She needs all 10 here to force a tie. What's the rules? I know it's a roll off. It's a roll off. What is the rules? Is it 9th and 10th? 9th and 10th roll off. Right, so it's a ninth and tenth roll off. A lot of people didn't know that Terry B was right handed before her accident and averaging better than her left hand. Terry B, Terry Bowling. I didn't I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. That's that's a fun that's a fun fact. Thank you. 
Missy needs all 10 here to force a 10th in game five. What is it gonna be? Looks good off the hand. Oh, and the champ forces a 9-10 frame roll off in game five. That is heart. That is heart of a champion right there. That is heart of a champion right there to force a roll off in game five. Ninth and 10th frame roll off. Chaos. Tiffany in frame nine, first frame of the two frame roll off. Strike. Missy here, frame nine, needs to match a strike. Tiffany striking in her first ball of the roll off. Another game so we can talk about the men. Yes, yes, because that would be a very interesting list to have. Missy in frame nine, on the roll off. Oh, flat ten. Here's the scenario. If you're gonna get a nine count, you either want it on the first ball or the last ball, right? You want first ball, you want it. Well, you want it on the first ball. Yes. But it, the, the, the best places to get it is the first or the last ball. So first point is good, because you can strike out and still get 50. Well, you almost missed it. Big spare here for Missy. But now let's see if Missy can, if she needs to strike out in a 10th frame, to force Tiff to do the same. Do it again. Just yeah. Heart of a champion. This is what it's about right here. Current champ in, an, in her 10th frame of a 9th and 10th frame roll off, Missy. Ben, we're at, we're at loadout lanes in New Jersey. First ball in the 10th. Off the hand, it looked good. And that's a big shot. Heart of a champion right now, striking when she needs to. Yes. I'll tell you what, Chris Aponte had a chokehold on the men's list for a while. So Chris Aponte is one of my favorite bowlers. I think he's one of the most talented bowlers in the Tri-State area. I know a lot of Missy here, that's not. Oh, but she got away with it and held it in the middle. She threw that one hard. She threw that one hard. So Chris Aponte is one of my favorite bowlers. That's in the in the in the UBA. I, um, Missy here, in last ball in the tenth. Of course, she goes strike, strike nine. So nine spare, strike, strike. So, so Tiffany needs. So Tiffany needs a double. And Tiffany needs a uh, the double. Double. Yes, she needs the double. Double. First, First ball. ball in the tenth. Oh, oh slow. No. Hey. slow, slow. Yeah. And there it is. Match is over. And there it is. Missy, Missy wins the match, four to one. This was fun. Yes, this was. Missy wins her match four to one. So, here with Missy Collins is your first title defense. How does it feel? How does it feel going into the roll-off after being up 3-1 and her almost forcing in game six? Honestly, there was pressure, but, you know, pressure burst pipes, but it didn't happen. But, you know, she's a good competitor. She's a great bowler, so... I got to get hats off to her. That was a great match. I, I can't say nothing bad about Tiffany Smalls. Nice, nice. So now that your first title defense is out the way, you're ready for, for the next uh, challenger? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. Here with Missy Collins at Lodi Lanes in her first title defense, winning in five after a frame 9 and 10 roll off. Congratulations, Missy. Thank you, thank you, thank you.